And also, uh, you were talking to me in 1942, Ford developed a uh, vehicle that ran off of hemp oil. Could you well, tell it was me? more than just running off of hemp oil. The body was constructed of, of uh, uh, plastic made from, from a hemp plant. It was ten times stronger than steel and uh, more flexible and resilient in an impact. So it, 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 it was the, the perfect material for automotive bodies. We're just now getting around... You know, in the last 20 years, to, to use an amount of plastics in automotive body construction. But we're using uh, plastics that have a large sideband of uh, pollution products, uh, the aramids and, and the uh, uh, polyethylenes, and all, all the plastics that we use, the, uh, the you know, the styrene. They all, they all come with at a heavy price. Now, do they consume? Uh, hydrocarbons, which we need for fuel and other purposes, they uh, they have a heavy burden on the uh, ecology of the of the locations where they're produced and then where they're disposed. The uh, hemp plastic was stronger than steel. It was very resilient. It would pop right out if it did get bent, uh, and it was biodegradable. So when you were finished with it, you ground it up and you mulched it. So it was more than just being powered by by biodiesel from hemp. It was also made from hemp. The seats were made from hemp fiber. It was actually, it's, uh, it's a type of fiber that's stronger than cotton. It uh, wears better. And uh, in fact, the Levi's blue jeans, when they were first uh, designed, were made from hemp. The uh, hemp blue jeans were so successful that they lasted so long, Levi's changed from hemp to cotton because it was bad for business because you had jeans that would never wear out. They used it for sailcloth. It was used for rope. Uh, the, uh, it's made in the other, of course, paper. Uh, hemp fiber is even used for making concrete. It makes a type of concrete that is six times stronger, I mean, um, lighter than conventional concrete, and it's also stronger. Now, I don't know what factor is stronger, but it's stronger than conventional concrete. And six times lighter. That brings... Uh, a whole new type of uh, construction uh, uh, possibility because you can build higher because it weighs less and it's stronger. So it just doesn't make sense to have this ongoing prohibition against a, mater- a plant that is so so useful. And, and what uh, part did this gentleman by the name of Hearst, last name of Hearst, what part did he play in all this? Well, William Randolph Hearst was the owner of um, Hearst uh, Publishing, which owned most of the large city newspapers in the country. They went on to uh, purchase many, many magazine companies, including Time at one time, uh, Life Magazine at one time. Uh, They were the largest publisher in the world. He also owned paper mills and uh, forestry uh, where they raised trees for the purpose of making paper. Now, uh, hemp makes four times as much paper per acre as a forest does, and it does it in one year instead of 20 years. So the rationale for using pulp for paper plus the uh, associated pollution and uh, energy cost doesn't make sense when you're looking at a plant like hemp which can be used very easily. It's already white. It doesn't have to be bleached. It doesn't have any uh, uh, acids in it that cause it to turn yellow and brittle after with age. This lasts literally for hundreds of years, as the as the fact that the copy of the uh, uh, Declaration of Independence proves. It, it it survived very well. Very little paper has to, uh, survived from that time that was not made from hemp. So uh, it was in William Randolph Hearst's best interest uh, to uh, monopolize the publishing industry from top to bottom, from the point of growing the trees, the, uh, making the paper, and then doing the publishing. Yeah, and also, B.C., we're starting to see the effects of uh, pulp and paper here in B.C. with all the pulp and paper uh, mills that we have. Uh, in the northern tip of Vancouver Island, there's one uh, near where I grew up in Port Alice. I'm from Port Hardy. Uh, to all the people in the Vancouver area, you're probably familiar with that is. But yeah, when, when I was growing up, I remember going uh, hunting with my dad, and you saw the effects on the environment firsthand. 
And it's just tremendous to think that we had in place for years, we had the technology where we didn't have to go down this road. And it was all because of money. And also, uh, the, the Hearst name is also quite um, present over in uh, New York. They're, they're, they built a gigantic uh, um, building over in New York. And it's supposed to be environmentally run, uh, 40%, something like 40% environmentally uh, uh, bio-run or something like that. Hmm. Isn't that kind of okay. contradicting itself? <laughs> well, I think if you research some of the so-called environmentally friendly substances they're using, they're not all that environmentally friendly. I mean, if they're using if they're using uh, uh, traditional Portland cement concrete, uh, then you have the uh, associated pollution with uh, the fractionating fractionating the uh, uh, plays with uh, high temperature, very high temperature kilns. They, they have an exemption uh, for burning coal, uh, medical waste, uh, any kind of type of hydrocarbon waste, or anything else they need for producing these concretes. The the uh, carbon load and the uh, pollution load that comes off of these plants is phenomenal. Uh, then then they have the uh, tremendous amount of electricity used to grind and powder the Portland cement, so it's usable as concrete. The uh, the hemp process uses just plain old ordinary hydrated lime, which is very easy to produce and uh, and, and at, at low uh, environmental impact, and uh, hemp fiber. And it makes a very, very, very strong process. So if they're using Portland cement in this building, it's not environmentally friendly. If they were using hemp cement, it would be. And also- so, yes, it's hypocritical. Yeah, and also you're telling me about there's uh, two weeks of food uh, shortage, extraction storage in the United States at this time. Could you go into uh, Yes, at this time we have uh, we have a two weeks uh, surplus supply of food. If there was a major disruption in uh, in uh, our food distribution system, not production, but distribution system, such as the inability to obtain fuel for our trucks. Uh, or uh, disruption in the in the whole uh, distribution process, one type or another, whether it be digital, financial, and they are having problems in the financial realm also in getting the loans to in order to process these uh, uh, shipments and maintain the distribution system because of the economy. But uh, any kind of disruption, we're left with two weeks total food supply in this country, and that's not very good. We used to do much better than that. Uh, so I, I do advocate uh, stocking up. And actually, the uh, uh, the FEMA pay homepage, FEMA .gov, it also uh, advocates the, uh, stocking up enough material for weeks weeks of survival in case of natural disaster, terrorist strike, or some other sort of disruption. So I'm not off base at all with that comment. I do want to say one more thing about hemp, though. Uh, Benjamin Franklin had set up a, a uh, paper mill for the production of paper for his magazines and his newspapers. His uh, and, uh, full feed stock supply was, was hemp. So he used hemp for making paper from the very beginning. In fact, at one time, the uh, you could be arrested if you refused to grow hemp which is counterintuitive to me also, but they, they thought it of it as such a uh, uh, strategic resource because, for, because of sailcloth and ropes and things for our ships that, uh, that they, they would actually force farmers to grow it, and you could pay your taxes in hemp at one time. So we've, come, we've done a 180, and it's uh, done uh, severe economic uh, harm to this country. Uh, Canada, I'm glad to see, is actually going back the other way and starting to produce uh, large amounts of hemp. And, and, and I'm talking about industrial hemp. I'm, it has no THC. You can't get high off of it. It's only good industrially. 